Hi friends, welcome to A to Z learning channel. I'm not sure what is your experience, but I get so many calls from various banks these days. The banks have too much money and they keep calling their customers to lure them with attractive interest rates, pre-approved loans, and several offers of quick disbursements. It does not matter how much we earn. The income is always little short to meet our spending expectations. Borrowing feels easy way to satisfy those wants with all that banks are offering these days. Borrowings, loans, whatever you want to call it, have become an integral part of our life. Loans are not necessarily bad things as long as we keep them at manageable level. Today, in this video, we share with you the golden rules of borrowing to make sure that you know about three important aspects of borrowing. First of all, how much you can afford to borrow. In the second part, we'll help you assess your current level of borrowings. We'll teach you how to assess your current level of borrowings. And in the final section, we'll talk about other key aspects that will help you choose the right loan. So this is a critical video. So stay with us until end of this video so that you don't miss out anything important. Let's first of all understand how much you can afford to borrow. Don't worry, we'll do this in a very, very simple manner so that you can easily understand this. Typically, people borrow for purchases such as home and car, but sometimes they take personal loan to purchase any other items, for example, white goods, for example, new phones, things like that, or sometimes fund their holidays. And sometimes they also take loan to pay off some of the older loans. In order to calculate how much you can afford to borrow, the first step is to determine your net monthly income. This is the income that you receive in your hands or bank account every month. If you are a fixed salary employee, then you get the, this amount, monthly amount in your bank account. That becomes your net monthly income. If you are one of those uh, roles where your monthly income is not fixed, sometimes it goes up, sometimes it goes down because you earn commission based on the or incentive based on the target that you achieve. So then in those cases where your monthly income is not fixed, I would suggest you look at your last 12 months payment and take the average of those 12 months and work with that as your net monthly income. The second step is that you must ensure that your loan EMIs, EMIs are basically expected monthly installments. So you must ensure that your loan EMIs in total don't exceed 50% of your net monthly income. Whether you have one loan or many loans, you must ensure that total of all EMI is less than 50% of your net monthly income. As a guide, as I've set out in the table on your screen, if you're looking to kind of go for home loan, car loan, personal loan, as a guide, I would say that your home loan commitment on a monthly basis must be less than 40% of your monthly income. Car loan EMI must be less than 15% of your monthly income and personal loan must be less than 10%. But in totality, all these loans put together, you must be less than 50% of your net monthly income. One other important thing to highlight is the all credit card payment must be made before their due date. Yeah, I repeat, all credit card payments must be made before their due date. Must not delay the credit card payment as this is the most expensive form of borrowing. I hope you're finding this simple and easy to understand. Please do let us know through the comments if you have any questions or suggestions on this. So let's move forward. Now let's understand how can you assess your current level of borrowing to know whether you are okay or you have to take some urgent action to manage your loans. You need to calculate the loan to income ratio the formula for this is on your screen, but let me walk you through this. First of all, write your net monthly income and list all your loan amounts. Add all your loan amounts 
together to determine some total of all your loan EMIs. Let's do this with an example. Let's say your monthly net income is 50,000. Okay. You have three EMIs. First one is home loan EMI, which is 15,000. Then second is the car loan EMI, which is say 7,000. And the third one is the personal loan EMI, which is let's say 3,000. This means in total your EMIs are 25,000. Okay, 15,000 for home, 7,000 for car loan, and 3,000 for personal loan. All put together is 25,000. Okay. In this case, your loan to income ratio will be 25,000, which is total of your loan EMIs, divided by 50,000, which is your net monthly income. 25,000 divided by 50,000 is half. So answer would be 50%. So your loan to income ratio in this example is 50%. Next step is to use the assessment table on your screen, which suggests that you are comfortable if your loan to income ratio is less than 25%. If your loan to income ratio is between 25 to 40%, you're still okay, but you need to be careful, little careful. If your loan to income ratio is between 40 to 50%, then you need to act. You need to take action to keep borrowing at the same level, ideally slightly down. But if it ever goes at 50% or higher than 50%, then it's a very, very alarming panic situation. That basically means your level of debt, your level of borrowing is not at all sustainable. Now let's go back to the example. In our example, the loan to income ratio was 50%. Therefore, person is in that last category, which is alarming category, which is very clear that the, the, the level of debt that they have, the level of borrowing that they have is not sustainable. They need to urgently act to make sure that in, in a time bound manner in next six months or so, they bring down their debt. I hope this was simple to understand. Please do let us know via comments if you have any questions or suggestion on this. And if you've not subscribed to our channel A to Z Learning yet, I would urge you to please subscribe our channel so that you get the notification on our new videos immediately. So let's move forward. Now in this section, which is our final part of video, where we will share with you some of the very important aspect to help you understand so that your selection in terms of borrowing and loan is absolutely right for you. So first point is around tenure. This is the period for which you take the loan. Most people select the period with a view to keep the monthly EMI as low as possible. But this means longer tenure and the longer tenure means you pay significantly more as interest cost. For example, if a person takes a loan of rupees 10 lakh at 10% interest for 20 years, then EMI will be approximately 9,500 per month. In total, this person will pay 22.8 lakhs over 20 years period. But if this same person can pay slightly more, say 500 rupees more, say EMI is 10,000 per month, then this person will pay only 14.4 lakh over the tenure of the loan period, which means 8.4 lakh less than the original calculation. So just a difference, a small difference of paying 500 more could bring down your tenure so much that it will bring down substantially your cost of borrowing. It is very, very important to keep the tenure as short as possible. Hopefully with this example, it's making sense. Second point is don't ever miss or delay the loan repayments. It has got two main negative implications if you do so. First, your credit score will get affected, which means your ability to get the best loan deal in the future will be reduced. The second negative implication is that your cost of borrowing will be very, very high. 
Third one, you must have the discipline of not borrowing too much to spend on your wants, which are not essential. I know it gets harder to control when you get easy access to the money and all these wants are there for you and your family and your children. You can easily lose the control, but you have to be very firm and disciplined of not borrowing too much to spend on your wants, which are not essential. Other reason a lot of people borrow is to invest, which is not a bad thing to do. But you need to make sure that your cost of borrowing is less than investment return. Okay. For example, if you're borrowing at say 10% interest rate, but then investing the same amount in bank FDs, which pay you 6%, this is not a good borrowing and you must avoid it. You're paying 10%, but earning only 6%. So you're making a loss of 4%. So that's not a good investment. So when you're borrowing to invest, make sure that you are investing in those options where your return, your earning is better than your cost of borrowing. Life is full of uncertainties and COVID has taught that nobody knows how long they are going to live. This is therefore very important for you to plan your affairs better. You must take insurance for your key loans to secure the future of your family in case something untoward happens to you. And these days, you, you have no guarantee. Life has absolutely no guarantee. Uncertainties comes from all directions all the time. Last one is the most important golden rule and my favorite. This is try to live within your mean. It's very, very simple. Just live within your mean. This may be hard to do given the easy access to loans, credit card these days, but this ensures a good night's sleep this also ensures your dependency on borrowing and loan is absolutely negligible or non-existent at all. I hope you found this video helpful and have picked up a couple of practical ideas to know your affordability in terms of how much you can borrow. Also to assess what is your own personal loan profile is. You must exercise some of these learnings on your financial profile to see whether you need to take any action to bring down your borrowings or you think your borrowing level are absolutely okay. So it's a good exercise to kind of go through every few months. We hope that overall the content of this video you must have found simple to understand and follow. If this was helpful, then we would urge you to please press the like button and let us know. If you've not subscribed our channel as yet, then I urge you to please subscribe and become part of our viewers community and help us simplify the world of savings and investment. We always get ideas from our viewers in terms of which topic we should pick up for our next video. So if you become part of our viewers community, you can be contributing those idea and you can be getting the content on the topics that matter to you. So please become part of our viewers community by subscribing our channel A to Z Learning. Thank you so much for watching our video. All the best.